Danny, and my father's been a smoker for over 20 years. I've grown up around the secondhand smoke all my life, and I've developed a tendency and addiction to nicotine myself. I started smoking about a year ago, and it's been life changing. Growing up, most of us were familiar with the warnings regarding the dangers of smoking, especially with the above the influence commercials on TV or the phrase drug abuse is life abuse in elementary all through high school. I'm assuming that most of you know that cigarettes contain thousands of chemicals. A few examples are lead, ammonia, formaldehyde, and cyanide TMP. Now, why would people knowingly continue to introduce their body to these toxins that will lead to this harmful consequences to the addicted individual and to those around him or her? Now, addictions usually start from experimentation leading to one bad habit and eventually leading on to dependence. Most of you probably know someone who has an addiction or had one, whether it's sex, alcohol, drugs, or even gambling. Today I'm going to explain what happens to the brain when a person becomes addicted to something, and I'll discuss what part of the brain is affected, the main chemical that affects the brain, and ways to overcome an addiction. The first thing I would like you to know is what part of the brain is affected. There is the brainstem, the living system, and the cerebral cortex. According to the National Institute on Drug Abuse, the brainstem provides basic functions to life such as breathing, sleeping, and heart rate. The cerebral cortex is responsible for processing information from one sense, such as seeing, hearing, or tasting. It's also the biggest center of the brain where it powers the ability to think, make decisions, and solve problems. The limbic system, contains the brain's reward circuit, and this system is the most important in regard to addiction. It links the brain structures that regulate the ability to feel pleasure, and it's activated by healthy activities such as eating and socializing. It's also responsible for people's perception of emotion, which explains the mood altering properties of many drugs. Now that you know what part of the brain is affected once there's an addiction, I will explain the main chemical that influences it. When a person takes an addictive product, such as heroin, cocaine, marijuana, or alcohol. Dopamine rushes through the bloodstream and into the limbic system of the brain. According to BrainTracks.org, dopamine receptors, dopamine is the main chemical or neurotransmitter that activates specific sites on the brain cells called receptors to increase pressure and reward. The increased flow of dopamine pushing into the brain eventually causes the brain to decrease the amount of dopamine receptors available. This is what results in tolerance to a substance or activity, and users will consume more of the drug that they're taking to achieve the same high. Here we have Charlie Sheen. Most of you are familiar with him. Um, he's a celebrity known for access to shows in Two and a Half Men and Anger Management. He's been known to have an addiction of alcohol and cocaine. And according to a New York Daily News, he was in rehab for 90 days in 2010. However, in October that same year, one incident occurred in a hotel in New York called The Plaza where he did not have the money to have sex with a prostitute. No. After being enraged, he destroyed tables, chairs, and a chandelier in his hotel suite. No. Once police arrived, he admitted he had been drinking and did cocaine prior to his violent adventure. This is a prime example of how an addiction can cause someone to make poor decisions the poor judgment or lose all self-control in general. Even though Sheen was in rehab for three months, that did not stop him from relapsing. Escaping addiction is not a simple process, since a relapse can occur at any time. According to addictionsandrecovery.org, I actually experienced withdrawal symptoms such as anxiety, depression, social isolation, nausea, and insomnia, as well as anger. Last up, a few ideas that can help control a person's addiction and deal with their withdrawals. The addiction psychiatrist and mental health expert David Sachs states that there is no single medication to cure addiction, but a long and lasting recovery requires a new way of life. There are several ways to help manage one's addiction. Healthguide.org states that in order to do so, the first step is to want to decide to make a change in one's life. 
That person will need to seek out options by searching for help from therapists, doctors, and social workers. Another aid to overcome addiction is to reach out for support by leaning on those friends and family who can encourage addicts to continue to fight their problems. Help Guide also insists that acts should learn to cope with stress by participating in daily exercise. And one way to keep cravings in check is by avoiding old drug buddies, avoiding alcohol since it impairs judgment, as well as keeping busy with activities such as going out with friends to movies, eating, or participating in yoga. Once things come together, the recovering addict can try to rebuild a meaningful life by picking up new hobbies, getting involved in the community, and continuing to look after his or her own mental and physical health by getting proper sleep and having a healthy diet. These activities will keep energy levels up, which lowers stress, and that will help the person avoid the triggers to relapse once again. <coughs> With proper determination, confidence, and persistence, it's possible to overcome any addiction. In conclusion, Addiction really is a problem and a real brain disease. It isn't just about having not enough willpower to overcome your problems, but really it's something that overtakes your life and it's not easy to overcome. Riley, share with us your thoughts, please. Um, I really enjoyed the overall uh, presentation and situation about the speech. Um, you seemed really, like, it was personal to you and you seemed knowledgeable about the topic. Uh, in the beginning, when you were discussing, like, what's in a cigarette, it didn't seem like you had any citation for it. But then, as you went through the speech, you definitely cited more. Um, the visual aids like went along with it, uh, but other than that, I really enjoyed it. Okay, uh, the attention device, I thought it was interesting because you kind of personalize it, and I think that that helps get the audience interested in what's going on. Uh, there's actually kind of a, a, a switch, because it turns out that it's not really about the smoking, it's about the addiction issue, and I thought that you did a nice job explaining that that's what your focus was going to be about. I think you could add a little bit more justification to that, telling us, for instance, uh, the number of people who are addicted to some kind of substance. I mean, you mentioned several types of addictions that people might have, uh, but if you you know, talked about the uh, 50 million people who are addicted to nicotine, the 22 million people who are addicted to cocaine, the 80 million people who are addicted to alcohol, and the 279 million people who are addicted to television or something like that. I mean, something that would give it a little bit more substance there, I think that that would help. Uh, you've got a pretty solid preview of what the material is going to be, so I think it's well organized when you get started. And uh, I, it stays pretty well organized also. The content issues, like I said, I think uh, you're, you're doing okay. Uh, I, was, I thought your explanation about the, the issue of dopamine and the way the receptors work was a little less full than I, is probably necessary uh, to begin with. It really felt like you kind of dropped that in there and that's where it belongs, it's in the right spot, but we don't get enough context, enough explanation. It's just the briefest uh, introduction to that kind of concept uh, that we can get. And so I felt like that needed to be a little bit more developed. And then the transitions, you've got uh, pretty good visual transitions. You set up the, um, 
the structure at the beginning of the speech, but the language is kind of perfunctory. It's almost like the second thing, the third thing. You need to have something that gets us a little bit more smoothly from one point to another. So that's uh, a little bit of an issue there. The visual materials, they're okay. I think uh, the first one is you know, basically an attention device. The second one is an attempt to identify the uh, place where uh, the addiction takes place. And I thought that that worked pretty well. And that seemed to me like then that would be a good place to introduce some explanation about how the dopamine and the receptors you know, don't always coincide with there's not enough receptors to deal with the dopamine. There's got to be some way of visualizing that concept to explain what you're talking about there. So I thought that was maybe missing a little bit there. The Charlie Sheen picture, uh, I think it gets you a good reaction. People know uh, what you're talking about there um, and why it's there. It's a, a little bit of humor that you stick in the speech. I'm not quite sure what that last visual is supposed to accomplish, except that I guess we're wandering off into happiness in a psychotic field where you know everything is beautiful. Uh, I'm not sure whether that is a criticism of what people are doing or it's a positive visualization of what happens if they actually get through uh, the process of rehabilitation. Uh, delivery issues. There's a little too much reading, and I think one of the problems is that you are so focused on getting what you've got in your notes together that you don't always talk to us. I think uh, Riley said that a little bit too. There's, it sounds like you are not quite as familiar as you should be. A little more practice would make a difference and then you could talk to us a little bit more. Uh, I think you, you've got most of the basics you're doing a good job on. Um, it's, like I said, well organized. You, you follow directions on most things. These are things to fix and make better. And, and there's room for growth on all of these points. Uh, but you also did a good job on a lot of things too. All right, thank you.